very noticeable, I, I would say shocking, that only a very small number of MPs, probably around 20%, have actually called for a ceasefire and are supporting a ceasefire. Um, meaning the rest of the the rest of them, around 80%, are, are, have either voted to continue to support continuing the war or didn't bother to vote, meaning they're kind of giving their acquiescence to it, I think. Mm-hmm. What I mean, you you are a seasoned political observer. What what do you make of the way that the British political class is apparently backing this horrible conflict? It's a very um, interesting, important question. And there used to be, even in Maggie Thatcher's day, a sort of balanced view about Israel-Palestine and a readiness. And Maggie Thatcher said that the Shatila Sabra massacres were pure barbarism. So... Uh, and she and it wasn't that all that she said, even though she was pro-Israeli. Though, but now there is a sort of un, to use the unfortunate term of Rishi Sunak, unequivocal support for Israel. Whatever it is doing, we support it, and that goes back, and you can trace it um, to the more or less to the uh, turn of the century in the aftermath of the Iraq War. A new kind of uh, political language, uh, I think. Uh, you've got to point to the enormous importance of the, or the triumph, or the success, one might even say, of the Conservative Friends of Israel, which claims, um, uh, you know, the majority, a big majority of Tory MPs belong to it. Um, I, I've, I've, I frequently, I'm, I'm, I think I'm the only mainstream political journalist ever to have written about the Conservative Friends of Israel uh, pretty well. Uh, and I've, I've talked to the people who run it, and I've talked to Tory M- uh, MPs. I particularly I asked CFI, have you ever criticised anything which Israel has ever done? You know, whether, uh, and no, they haven't. You know, the basic law, uh, the, the, I mean, na- never have they criticised. You see, I say to them, well, wouldn't you be a better friend of Israel if you actually did criticise Israel when it commits war crimes? But they, there's no answer to that. They're just a friend of his. In fact, Stuart Pollock, who was now the president, having been a long-standing director of it, is now in the House of Lords, even criticised or sent them. But basically, he said that when we, the British government rightly said, I mean, we wouldn't talk to Ben Gavir, who's a racist, uh, you know, serious, I mean, a really unpleasant piece of work. Um uh, he he he, could have, he said we should be talking to Israeli ministers, and this was singling Israel out for special treatment. And they are very very powerful in terms of uh, shaping uh, the opinion at the season top level of the Conservative Party, and also I think sheer ignorance. Right, the most if you look at the re- record of most Tory MPs, and we come on, I don't I'm not so good on Labour, but we we. But yeah, they, 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 even so far as they've ever been to the region, the region, it's on a CFI trip, which is available. And uh, it's four days. You meet at one stage, at some stage or another, a tame Palestinian who says everything's absolutely fine. And, and, they, and the sheer ignorance of people, of, of, of they don't know the Middle East the way a previous generation of, of, of uh, MPs might well have done. This is almost a taboo subject, though, isn't it, in some circles in the British media? But it's an important one because, no, we can't really deny on, on the basis of the evidence. I mean, I've mentioned Conservative Friends of Israel and Labour Friends of Israel. There are other influences as well. Um, what, what's, could, you, could you give us an overview of how, how you think this Israel lobby works or how, how strong is it and, and why, why, is it, why is it taboo? I think you're right. It is taboo that most... Um lobbies operating uh, at Westminster are gleefully um, exposed and written about. Um, when I made my, but the, 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 the Israel lobby is, a, is an exception to this, uh, generally speaking. Um, I made a film for Channel 4 dispatches about it and wrote a pamphlet uh, and people just wouldn't go and come on the film and they taunted um, me saying, you know, you're not going to be able to make it and nobody will speak to you. And um, just because they, everybody's too afraid, one person, one M- Tory MP actually insisted on, before speaking to us, on taking his mobile phone out of the room and parking it 
somewhere else. You know, that was that le level of nervousness, and um, it was all, it's bizarre because it, the, 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 pro, the, the pro Israel lobby in Britain is, is, is obvious. Uh, the power of the weight of C CFI is, is formidable in shaping the opinion of Tory MPs. Just look at its, uh, you know, the, the annual party at Tory conference, which is sort of a must attend event, huge queues, uh, 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 and the, the, the annual lunch, unless sort of, familiar with the Labour Friends of Israel operation, so I don't want to talk about it. And, and, and then of, and then of, and the media in the mainstream media in Britain is is powerfully pro pro Israel and has been for, for a long time. And and yet it's perfectly legitimate for lobbies like this to operate, of course. There's no nothing illegal about it. Uh, and uh, but there's the, the nightmare for the Palestinians is there is also a pro Arab lobby. But of course, that pro-Arab lobby um, is pro-Israel. In fact, I, I, having made my film for Channel 4 on the pro-Israel lobby, I then said to Channel 4, let me make you a film about the pro-Arab lobby. And we went and presented it to the head of dispatches, and he sat there for about 50 minutes. It's the same thing, he said. What's the point of making this film? Because, of course, the elites uh, who run... The Arab, the, the 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 Amirs and the kings and so forth are generally uh, in the same place uh, as Israel, and and therefore, uh, and and who are the pro-Palestinian lobby? For a long time, there wasn't such a thing as conservative friends of Palestine at all, and uh, there was no balancing, or, and it was terrifying for, to go to go to war on behalf of, as it were, sort of make the case for Palestinians in the Conservative Party who were completely isolated. Uh, and Saeed Avasi is the, is the most distinguished uh, member of that tradition. Um, but they're, they're very isolated indeed. And, and this needs to change because it, it doesn't reflect them, the uh, views of, the, of a large number of British people. And I think that the Palestinians... You know, there is this something about being British and supporting the 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 equal rights. You know, I, I, you know, and how many papers even refer to the fact that all every human rights um, newspapers, all the human rights organisations in the world, including the Israeli ones, say that Israel is an apartheid state. It's almost never referred to. If we go back fifty years to nineteen. You remember the 1973 oil embargo that the Arab states put on the West because of their support for Israel, uh, a massive geopolitical issue um, that changed international relations for, for, for decades. Um, that's gone, hasn't it? I mean, the Arab states just don't have that, that level of solidarity with the Palestinians that there was a few decades ago. They've, they've been, they've been co-opted, right? Well, I think it's important to distinguish between the leadership, these tiny elites which run the Arab states, and the um, and the, um, the people who live in those Arab states. Uh, and of course, you're right that um, the corrupt uh, elites uh, uh, have been come brought into these relationships via the so-called Abrahamic Accords. Uh, and uh, we're already part of a system of client despotisms um, sort of run in the interests of the United States, and and uh, which can date back to decades now. But and it is interesting, of course, that the the opposition comes from, say, the Houthis, and, 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 and they are the most fascinating phenomenon of a. Uh, of a movement which has emerged spontaneously, has defeated the Arab, the, the Saudi clan regime in, in, in Yemen in seven, something like seven wars. I see that Ina Craig is in the discussion here. <laughs> I mean, who's an expert on the Yemen. She, she, uh, that, that, and now they are the most sort of so, most formidable <laughs> opposition in the region to Israel. So, I think ultimately that that kind of energy from below poses a threat not just to um, to, to all all the client regimes, the Saudis or the uh, you know MBZ etc., 
who who have who thrown their white weight behind Israel because they are so detached from their own own opinion, the, the, their own people.